Wonders of Saint Joseph Part 4 Virginal Father of Jesus The Espousal Feast No husband and wife loved each other so much as Joseph and Mary since there is nothing on record that he Joseph ever had any other spouse than virgin Mary it is also certain that he remained virgin all his life In the liturgical uh, calendar we have a marriage feast of Joseph and Mary which is called the Espousal of Joseph and Mary The feast of the holy spouses has a long history going back to the 15th century. It is given on the date uh, January 23rd. In a few countries celebrated on January 22nd and November 26th, but those days tend to be exceptions. Nobody knows why this day is chosen, but it is quite fascinating insight into the date if we see it in the mystical visions of blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. We have the saint blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich who claims to be transported to the marriage of Mary and Joseph and witness the ceremony she gives details about the wedding and explicitly mentions the date of the marriage she writes the espousal took place i think upon our 23rd of january it was celebrated in jerusalem on mount zion in a house used for such feast another mystic venerable mary of agrada who also claimed to have visions about lives of Mary and Joseph wrote extensively about her mystical experiences and claims to have been present at the wedding of Joseph and Mary her account of the wedding provides detailed descriptions of such things like dress of our lady the stateliness attractiveness of saint joseph the joy experienced by everyone in attendance and she writes the following by divine operation the two most holy and chaste spouses felt an incomparable joy and consolation on their wedding day The heavenly princess as one who is the mistress of all virtues lovingly corresponded to the des- to the desires of saint joseph the most high also gave to saint joseph new purity and complete command over his natural inclination so that he might serve his spouse mary why don't more people know about the liturgical feast because this feast is not in the universal calendar of the church the feast of the holy spouse only celebrate few shrines dedicated to saint joseph like the oratory of saint joseph in montreal canada few dioceses where the local bishop has approved it and in several religious communities which are dedicated to saint joseph one notable such community is is the oblates of saint joseph which was founded in asti italy by saint joseph marello in 1878 it is a wonderful religious community of men serving the church and they celebrate this feast annually on january 23 their founder saint joseph marello was a very holy bishop who had a tremendous love and devotion to saint joseph Pope John Paul II canonized him in 2001 and in 2002 St John Paul II offered the world the luminous mysteries of the rosary. The luminous mystery was actually founded in uh, 1957 by St George Preca of Malta but St Pope John Paul II offered them to universal church to help us to call to mind important truths of Christianity that were under attack today especially. The second luminous mystery the wedding feast of Cana in meditating on this mystery we are reminded that marriage is between man and woman. Since this perennial truth is so hotly contested today the church needs a universal liturgical feast that celebrates the marriage it should be truly wonderful if the church placed this feast of the holy spouse in universal liturgical calendar such a feast will be reminded to men and women of the sanctity of holy matrimony what a delight it would be to liturgically celebrate the holiest couple who ever lived let us pray that more places request permission to celebrate the feast of the holy spouses and that some day it may be placed on the universal liturgical calendar Everything that refers to that marriage of Mary and Joseph happened by an intimate disposition of the Holy Spirit. There are some objections uh, to the virginity of Saint Joseph because Jesus uh, had other brothers and sisters mentioned in the gospel. There were other children of Mary. Joseph does not kn- know his uh, wife until Jesus is born and Joseph the widower. We will discuss these arguments. It is perfectly in accordance with faith and the spirit of the church to honor as a virgin not only the mother of God but likewise Joseph the mother of Jesus a virgin a perpetual virgin the perpetual virgin to Mary has been very important teaching of Christianity from the beginning and in the 4th century there was a bishop named Bolo so from Elicricum which is Albania and rebuked by his brother bishops and stripped of his episcopal Pope Pius for teaching that Mary and Joseph had more children after Jesus was born. The Pope at that time was Pope Sirius who wrote a letter to the faithful bishops in Eriricum thanking them for disciplining the errant bishop. He wrote, "We surely cannot deny that you were right in correcting the doctrine about children of Mary and you are right in rejecting the idea that any other offspring should have come from the same virginal womb from which Christ was born according to the flesh." 
this doctrine of mary's uh, perpetual virginity is such an important teaching of the christianity that pope martin the first uh, made it a dogma of the faith in the lateran uh, council in 60 in 649 with this in mind did you know that there is a tradition in the church that holds in joseph was a perpetual virgin as well it is a tradition which is adhered to and promoted by saints holy mystics and popes for centuries but there are objections which we have to look uh, at first firstly that uh, jesus had other brothers and sisters and uh, mary did not remain a virgin first glance these statements seem to contradict perpetual virginity of mary but the catechism of the catholic church teaches that the church has always understood these passages and not referring to other children of virgin mary in fact james and joseph are brothers of jesus the sons of another mary a disciple of christ whom uh, saint john significantly calls the other mary they are close relations of jesus according to the old testament expression Then the catechism is the fruit of centuries study of the scripture and learned biblical scholars familiar with the old testament expressions have also held that when brothers and sisters used to describe the relatives of Jesus not biological brothers and sisters and it is also a way to describe cousins of Jesus every biblical scholar knows that in the ancient greek versions of old and new testament word used for brothers is the same as cousins saint jerome the great biblical scholar of the church tackled the issue in the 4th century he offers reflections Certain people who follow the ravings of the apocryphal fancy that the brethren of our Lord are sons of Joseph from another wife, and invent a certain woman, Melka or Esther, as it is contained in the books which we wrote uh, against the uh, healthy dears, we understand as brethren of the Lord, not the sons of Joseph, but the cousins of the Savior, children of Mary, wife of Cleopas, she who was the Lord's maternal aunt, who is said to be the mother of James the Less and Joseph and Jude. They, as we read. were called brethren of the lord in another passage of the gospel indeed all scripture indicate that, that cousins are called brethren saint joseph addresses several points in this statement he notes that brothers and sisters of jesus were not biological siblings but cousins and also points out that the idea that saint joseph had children from a previous marriage finds its origin in apocryphal non canonical non approved documents then we have saint be the venerable one of the greatest historians of the 8th century echoes these thoughts of uh, saint jerome They were indeed heretics who thought Joseph the husband of ever virgin Mary had generated from another wife those whom scripture calls brethren of the Lord others with the most cunning thought that he Saint Joseph would have given birth to others from Mary herself after the birth of the Lord but my dearest brother without any fear on this question we must know and confess that not only the blessed mother of God but also the most holy witness and guardian of her chastity remained free from absolutely all marital acts in scriptural usage the brothers and sisters of our Lord are called not their children of mary and joseph but their relatives saint jerome and saint be know what they are talking about these greats are not only defending a fundamental truth of christianity that is mary's perpetual virginity but also affirming the tradition that saint joseph remained a virgin his entire life the second objection is that mary could not have remained a virgin and by association neither could saint joseph remain a virgin because jesus was the first born of mary and once again saint joseph offers biblical answer to the objection Certain people have perversely conjectured that Mary and Joseph had other sons, for they assert that he alone, who is to be called firstborn, has brothers. However, it is customary in Holy Scripture to call firstborn not him whom uh, brothers follow, but him who is first begotten. In other words, when Scripture refers to Jesus as firstborn, a child of Mary, this does not mean that they are second, third, fourth born children of Mary. Referring to Jesus as firstborn son of Mary is simply a biblical way of stating that Mary. beget her first child it doesn't mean that there were more children that followed the third argument states uh, the notion of mary and joseph having a virginal marriage uh, because the passage in the gospel states that joseph did not know his wife until jesus was born and joseph rising up from sleep did uh, as the angel of the lord had commanded to him mary as his wife and he knew her not until she brought forth her first born son and he called his name jesus in matthew 124 and 25 At first glance the passage from Matthew does not give the impression that uh, Joseph engaged in marital relation with his wife after the birth of, to Jesus. He knew her not until she brought forth her first born son. However, there are numerous scholars, saints, popes and theologians stated over the century that the word here until in scripture does not necessarily mean a subsequent action that will follow in the future. Saint Thomas Aquinas, the greatest theologian in the history, tackled this issue in the Summa Theologica. He wrote, "Until does not necessarily have a determined temporal sense." When the psalmist says our eyes are turned to the Lord until he has mercy on us this does not mean that once we have obtained mercy from the Lord we shall he we shall take our eyes off him
There are several passages in the scripture that attest to the use of the word until. That does not imply that an action will necessarily follow. For example, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of her death. Until I come, attend to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Timothy should stop preaching on Jesus after Paul arrives. Does it mean that? Of course not. For he, Christ, must reign until he has put all his enemy under his feet. Does this mean that Christ's reign will end? Of course not. And he, St. Joseph, knew her not until she brought forth her firstborn son. Does it mean St. Joseph had a relation with Mary after she gave birth to Jesus? No, it doesn't. The consistent teaching and tradition of the Catholic Church is that Joseph and Mary lived a virginal marriage and their perpetual virginity resulted in a perpetually virginal son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The teaching of the Church that Mary and St. Joseph lived a virginal marriage is the basis of the tradition that St. Joseph was a perpetual virgin. In fact, the tradition holds that St. Joseph was a perpetual, also affirmed that St. Joseph in a similar fashion to Mary had made a vow of virginity to God in his youth. Both Mary and Joseph had made a vow to remain virgin all the days of their life, and God wished them to be united in the bonds of marriage. Not because they repented of the vow already made, but to be confirmed in it and to encourage each other to continue in this holy relation. Mary belonged to Joseph and Joseph to Mary so much so that their marriage was very real since they gave themselves to each other. But how could they do this? Behold, the triumph of purity. They reciprocally gave their virginity and over this virginity they gave each other mutual right. What right? To safeguard the other's virtue. Joseph and Mary safeguarded each other's virtue for the sake of the mission of their virginous son. The idea that son Joseph was a widower who brought the children from his first marriage into the marriage with Mary has never been officially the teaching of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has never advanced this idea because not in accord with the dominant tradition, St. Joseph was a perpetual virgin. It is important to stress that the idea of St. Joseph man who had previously been married and fathered other children from a previous wife, as well as the claim that he was an old man when he espoused Mary, originate in apocryphal non-approved sources. On such occasion, the apocryphal sources have been used by the Church to establish liturgical feasts like the Feast of St. Joachim and Anne. But such instances are only affirmed by the church when they are in accord with the tradition. It can't be denied that some fathers of the church in the East wrote favorably about St. Joseph having a previous marriage and children. However, this does not in any way mean church embraced these idol promoted them as official teaching. On the contrary, the dominant tradition on this matter holds that St. Joseph is not a widower but a virgin. The church's constant tradition holds that St. Joseph lived a life of a consecrated chastity. Some of the apocryphal gospels picture him like an old man, even a widower. This is not the church's teaching. We are rather to believe that he was a virgin who entered the virginal marriage with Mary. Some other saints and mystics and scriptural scholars and theologians are not the only ones to affirm this virginal fatherhood of St. Joseph. There are 20th century popes also who have done it. Like Pope St. Pius X, who approved a prayer invoking St. Joseph as the virginal father of Jesus, even granting indulge all who recite this prayer. It reads, O Joseph, virgin father of Jesus, most pure spouse of the Virgin Mary, pray for us daily to the same Jesus, the Son of God, that armed with the weapons of His grace, we may fight as we ought during this life, and be crowned by Him at the moment of our death. Amen. On 4th of May 1970, Pope St. Paul VI, speaking to a group in France, affirmed Mary and St. Joseph lived a virginal marriage. He went so as far to offer an image of St. Joseph and Mary, new parents of humanity, a new type of Adam and new Eve. He stated, Whereas Adam and Eve were the source of evil which was unleashed on the world, Joseph and Mary are the summit from which holiness spreads over all the earth. The Saviour began the work of salvation by this virginal and holy union. So this tradition of St. Joseph as a perpetual virgin provides us tremendous insight into his greatness and virtue and affords us an insight into how old he probably was when he was espoused to Mary. A present day of St. Joseph as a virgin presumed that he was young when he was espoused, young enough to make sacrifice of his viral powers. An image of a youthful man who had to exhibit heroic supernatural virtue to remain a virgin. He espoused with the most beautiful woman that ever lived. An elderly man espousing a young virgin requires no sacrifice because his virility and passion are waning. A strong, loving and youthful and virginal man on the other hand would be required to make a tremendous sacrifice of mind, body, senses and heart in order to espouse a woman so pure and lovely. Think about it. If Virgin Eve was entrusted by God to the care of a virginal husband, Adam, why would it be any different between Mary and St. Joseph? For Mary and Joseph are much greater than Adam and Eve. Unlike our own parents, Adam and Eve, the virginal union of our new parents, Mary and Joseph, did not result downfall of human race but in mankind's elevation. The virginal loving union of Joseph and Mary leads to redemption. Their virginal union produces a virginal son, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Catholic tradition has thought that Mary's virginal love for God was so great that she consecrated body to God at an early age because of the vow of perpetual virginity. She entrusted her entire life to God and had absolute confidence in His plan. 
she desired nothing in life but god's will her confidence in god so great she trusted him to lead her into marriage with a man she was certain that god would give a man who would love both her and god and so respect her vow a man who would completely dedicated to god's plan and protect her virginity she never doubted god saint joseph god prepared a spouse guardian and a knight for mary according to god's design it had to be this way God did not come into the world in any other manner than through the marriage of a man and woman, a virginal man and woman. In Saint Joseph, Mary experienced perfect reflection and mirror of God's love for her. When Mary met Saint Joseph, she knew that God had chosen him to be her loving and beloved husband. Trusting God's plan, she fell in love with Joseph and gave her, him her heart. Mary's body was reserved for God, but she had the freedom to give her heart to Saint Joseph, the only man worthy of her, the only man perfectly reflecting God's pure love. The virtuous manhood of Saint Joseph Mary experienced purity chastity modesty and sacrificial love Mary's heart and body were secure in the spousal love of Saint Joseph he is a mirror of purity of father god the father like the father eternally begets a son without physical union with another person saint joseph fathers a son without physical union with mary so this virginal marriage of joseph and mary brings about spiritual motherhood spiritual fatherhood and virginal fecundity The greatest theological mind in all of Christianity have praised the virginal fatherhood of Saint Joseph. The Virgin Mary has been wed to the virgin of bridegroom Joseph, yet she who married Joseph out of obedience to her elders has no fear for her virginity under Joseph's protection. Having placed her trust in God, she delegated to a man the safeguarding of the greatest treasure. She who had dedicated the flower of virginity to God earlier in a solemn ceremony had no doubt that she would have a virginal spouse. Saint Augustine says a son was born of the virgin Mary to the piety and love of Joseph and the son was the son of God thus should not the husband accept virginally what the wife brought forth virginally for just as she was a virginal wife so was he a virginal husband just as she was a virginal mother so was he a virginal father therefore whoever says he should not have been called father because he did not generate the son looks to concupiscence in the procreation of children not to the inner sentiments of love let his greater purity confirm his fatherhood let not holy mary reprehend us for she was unwilling to place her name before that of her husband but said thy father and i have been seeking thy sorrowing therefore let no perverse murmurers do what the virginal wife did not do as he was a virginal husband so he was a virginal father just as he was the man just so was the woman the holy spirit resting the justice of both gave a son to both Saint Jerome says Joseph was also the virginal through Mary in order that from a virginal marriage a virginal son might be born. Saint Bernardine says I believe that this man Saint Joseph was adorned with the most pure virginity the most profound humility and the most ardent love and charity towards God. Saint Francis he says says in order to augment and support Mary's virginity the eternal father gave her a virginal companion the great Saint Joseph. Saint John Henry Newman says that he Saint Joseph was a virgin and his virginity was the faithful mirror of the virginity of Mary. Saint Thomas Aquino also believed that Saint Joseph was a virgin. The angelic doctor offers additional insight into the fatherhood of Saint Joseph, advancing the notion only proper that Jesus entrusted his virgin mother to a virginal husband, since the virgin mother was later entrusted to a virginal apostle Saint John the Apostle at the foot of the cross. Saint Thomas writes, "We believe that just as the mother of Jesus was a virgin, so was Joseph, because he, God, placed the virgin in the care of a virgin, Saint John the Apostle, and just as he." did this at the close at the cross so did he do it at the beginning at the marriage of mary and joseph saint thomas aquinas reasoning becomes sense if you were god wouldn't you entrust your mother to a virgin wouldn't you want your mother to be guarded and honored by man absolutely pure chaste and of perfect relation and reflection of god's love of course you would saint albert the great also wrote as a virginal husband he saint joseph guarded his virginal wife Saint Mary of Agrada the 17th century saint who wrote the book Mystical City of God which is a devotional masterpiece portraying for us the life and wonders of the blessed virgin Mary she were, had many conversations and uh, between Jesus and Mary in one such conference saint Joseph spoke to this beloved wife about the delight he took in her virginity and revealed to her that he too had taken a vow of virginity in his youth it reads thus My mistress in making known to thee thy words stays and welcome sentiments thou hast penetrated and dilated my heart I have not opened my thoughts to thee before knowing thy own I also acknowledge myself under greater obligation to the lord of creation than any other man for very early he has called me to his true enlightenment to love him with an upright heart and I desire thee to know lady that at the age of 12 years I also made a promise to serve the most high in perpetual chastity on this account I now gladly ratify this vow in order not to impede thy own In the presence of his majesty I promise to aid thee as far as 
in me lies in serving him and loving him according to thy full desires i will be with the divine grace thy most faithful servant and companions i pray thee accept my chaste love and hold me as thy brother without ever entertaining any kind of love outside the one which thou ownest to god and after god to me saint joseph is the virgin of spouse of mary and the virgin of father of jesus he is the perpetual virgin saint joseph is your virginal father do you know about santo anelo it is a sacred wedding ring given to the blessed virgin mary by her most chaste spouse saint joseph this wedding ring that saint joseph gave to mary is still in existence today and it is reserved in a special gold and silver reliquary in the cathedral of saint san lorenzo in perugia in italy many people go to pilgrimage to assisi italy are unaware that only a short distance away from assisi is this holy ring this ring is there in uh, perugia since the 19th century prior to this uh, term in uh, perugia the ring was housed in various other location throughout italy until recently the existence of the ring was not known to many people even today people do not know about this holy ring blessed and catherine received a vision regarding this uh, holy ring prior to the vision she had no idea about the ring saint joseph had given to mary she says i saw the blessed virgin's wedding ring it is neither of silver nor of gold nor of any other metal dark in color and iridescent it is not a thin uh, narrow ring but rather a thick and at least a finger broad i saw it smooth and yet as it is covered with little uh, regular triangles in which we were letters on the inside was a flat surface The ring is engraved with something. I saw it kept behind many locks in a beautiful church. Devout people about to be married take their wedding rings to touch it. In the last few days, I have seen much of the story of Mary's wedding ring, but as a result of disturbance and pain, I am no longer given a connection of account of it. Today, I saw festival in the church in Italy where the wedding ring is to be found. It seemed to me to be hung in a kind of a monstrance which stood above the tabernacle. This was a large altar magnificent. magnificently decorated one so deep into it through such silver work i saw many rings held there against the monster during the festival i saw mary and joseph appearing in their wedding garments on each side of the ring as if joseph was placing the ring on blessed mary's hand at the same time i saw the ring shining as if it was in movement according to these visions it is learned that this wedding ring was in the church in italy but no one knew about it only after she died people found out about it People began searching for the location of this ring. This ring and its location were discovered in this uh, cathedral of uh, Perugia. Then this ring had been there for some time but nobody uh, outside of Italy knew about it. This uh, ring is a fascinating aspect uh, about the visions is that uh, this ring is venerated by people all over the world. Oh what pure love the virgin spouses had for each other more than Adam and even the early days of their innocence Joseph and Mary were the delight of the Lord the ecstasy of the angels in the humble home of Nazareth Nazareth was similar to Eden in the first days of creation everything was holy everything was innocent everything was beautiful